Hi my friends, I thought I'd do a quick update video on the uh, 28 pickup. I, um, after I did that video the other week about it, I was quite inspired by the comments and, uh, and um, encouragement on this, so um, I was thinking about the roof. Uh, I was going to do a steel roof, but then I was reminded by watching a video uh, by Jonathan W, which is a channel I'm lucky enough to be subscribed to, and uh, he's working on an old car, an owl car, and the roof, he was pointing out the roof line, and I figured the, that it would be a good opportunity to simulate the little slats that he was showing on the real car with um, lines and plywood. And so I thought I'd give a wooden roof a go. So I hunted around on the internet and um, after looking at, um, pausing and looking at uh, still shots of Jonathan's Alcar roof line and I found a, um, a pickup roof that was similar, uh, wood at least, and um, scaring the, the YouTubes. So yeah, found the pickup, 28 pickup pictures and then I um, I uh, did a pattern in uh, easel, so this just pretty much cut out the, the holes and the outline of the roof to produce the, uh, the effect of the slats. I then um, went into the, put a piece of scrap of plywood on the, in the uh, X-carve and I did a rough, a roughing out operation using a 6mm bit which uh, to, to take out the holes that was followed up by a, a detail cut uh, I think it was a three mil bit maybe a four mil bit where I cleaned up around the insides and um, then I did a um, a third operation with with the uh, four mil bit to cut around the outside of the uh, piece of wood and what you'll see at this stage is that it's all square and you're probably thinking, why would I do that? I'll get to that soon. Um, cleaned up the machine because, you know, you want to keep your workspace clean, don't you? So on the vacuum cleaner, did my maid impersonation. Then I um, pretty much went out to the shed with the, um, the piece of wood and I um, put the curvature in the, <clears throat> in the wood and... I know that I could have CNC'd out the curve with a, a bull nose or I could have ran one of those curved bits around the outside and I would have had this nice perfect edging but I don't want to do that. I want it to look handcrafted because this is based on the days of coach makers pretty much. This is manual stuff for the real cars even and, I, and you can tell from looking at the... Um, and you can tell from looking at the um, the steel on this, nothing is perfect or machined or straight. It's all a bit haphazard. And if I had put a perfectly machined piece of wood on top of this, it would have stuck out and it just would not look right. You might not know why it didn't look right, but it, something would just be a bit squirrely. So I wanted this to look handcrafted. So anyway, uh, actually it wasn't even this one. It was this one. This is the first one I did, guessing the measurements. I just measured the front here, the back here, the distance there, you know, and uh, drew drew all that into the uh, 3D software. So anyway, after I got this done, I was so excited, I thought, gee whiz, that looks groovy. So I got on the internet and posted a picture of the, uh, the results on the um, YouTube community page. Where, where I can, uh, you know, just do comments and photos and things like that. So then I um, sort of sit down and watch the birds in the bird feeder for a while and uh, just relax and daydream. Pretty little birds, yeah. Then uh, off down to the park, the dog gave me the word, so off down to the park. It had been raining the day before. So I took Kiva down to the park for a walk so she could get her... Uh, quota of sniffs in down there 
see who else has been around. Uh, whilst doing these things, I decided I was going to do another roof. So I went back into the software again. Um, this time I decided I would not um, hog out the holes, but I'd just outline them. And um, like, like the roof, pretty much. And that could be done all in one um, operation with a single 4mm bit, I think it was, in the end. So, and that also um, shortened the job by about half. So then got into that on the machine, second piece of wood, ran around, did the edging, uh, I mean did the, the internal pockets and then did the outside cut all in one operation. Once I'd done that, I did the sensible thing, a clean thing, cleaned up my workspace, cleaned all that crap up because if I leave it and go and do something else, chances are I'm not going to clean it. So it's best if I just clean it straight away. So I cleaned it up. Then I got back out into the shed again and um, same deal. Hit, hit it with a flapper disc just to, to give it the nice rough edges. Uh, the curve, but a handmade looking curve, not a perfectly smooth machined curve because it's not really the way to do things if you're trying to simulate a 1928 pickup. Uh, then, after that, I, I grabbed the Dremel and put the, uh, a little cutter disc on there just to put some cuts in it so it doesn't look like a composite material. It looks like it's put together by um, separate bits of wood. So then, so then we get this um, result. Uh, what else do I do? Oh, after I had... Um, I'll see if I can get you in there. Where I did these little nicks. So it looks like these here are little, um, they're buttered up against each other. So used, used car oil to stain it. So what I'll do next, uh, I think that looks pretty cool, so I'm going to stick with wooden roof, but what I do want to do is I want to wait until this is on its chassis and every, you know, everything's sitting so I know exactly how it's going to be angled, what its rake is and all those sorts of things. And that's why I've purposely left this a little bit fat up here. I think once this is welded all together and it's got its stance, then I can just uh, skim the top of this just to, to give it a little bit of a rake downwards. So I'll take this off a bit more so it's thinner at the front than it is at the back. Once I've done that, I can go to the bottom here and make these bits here, uh, cut them out along the bottom so they look like um, small little... Um, bits of wood that they'd uh, put the canvas over. So yeah, that's that's the upshot on the, the wooden roof. That's how I went about doing it. And um, this time I thought I'd try a different um, way of videoing it. Uh, use storytelling rather than um, explaining what I'm going to do, then doing it. Just get on with it. But I think that looks alright. It doesn't look too out of place. I think it'll match this old pickup uh, with the flat head. Uh, one other thing I might as well mention while we're here is these radiator pipes. This is an experiment. See if we can get right in there so you can see the textures. This is uh, wiring out of our house. Got an old 40s villa. So there's a lot of old wiring left up in the roof inside steel conduit. And this old wiring's three core, copper three core, stuff kind of like this, but instead of single or three core. And it's covered in like paper and then in a woven material so um, I think that looks quite a lot like an old um, radiator pipe so I'm gonna try these out and actually if I pull that out of there I don't know if you can see that that's that's the uh, wire there and so when I um, take a little bit off the end it fits right inside the hole there so I'll be able to glue this all together once it's all ready to go and I'll drill some little holes in the back of the radiator head here and I'll um, cut these to length and poke those in there. So I think that's going to look alright. So yeah, I like the um, mixed media of the this, you know, I like the steel but it's nice to have other stuff in there to soften it up so I think the wood's pretty cool. That's why I use the lever 
uh, the suede liver and the um, rust never sleeps as well. Yeah, all right, guys. So that's that's this video. Um, looked all right. Hopefully, it inspires others. I think this one here, the spare one, I might just throw that on top of that thing over there when I get around to building that one. All right, guys. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.